Thank you very much, Larry. We are here on a beautiful afternoon for football. Coming up, it's a rematch from last year's AFC Wild Card round between the Pittsburgh Steelers and the Cincinnati Bengals. This is taken at his four. And he'll take it up past the 25 to the 26-yard line. They'll come out in the pistol. Now a carry for the former Michigan State man, Le'Veon Bell. Call it a gain of four on first, and that'll make it second down. You know, Charles, for a lot of fantasy football players, week 14 was the first week of the playoffs. You remember back to draft day, Le'Veon Bell being out the first three weeks. Do I take him? Do I not? Well, those who took him, they were rewarded in week 14. And in a big way, because Le'Veon Bell at Buffalo, 236 yards on the ground, 38 carries, 298 yards overall in the game. The snow didn't affect him. It's not just that he plays in Pittsburgh. Remember his background, Michigan State. He had some cold weather games, some nasty games in Spartanland as well. Yeah, those 236 on the ground, franchise record. Never make the mistake that the slot receivers, especially the little guys like we're watching here, are just quicker than fast. A lot of them combine quickness and speed, and they catch a lot of footballs as we just saw there. Now a play fake here on first down. And incomplete as he was knocked as he threw it. And it took the ball off course. The good signal callers would never go back in the huddle and play the blame game because they need those guys to protect him. But on that last one, his offensive line, they lost their leverage very quickly. And that's why they were able to get to him and hit him as he tried to throw the football and force an incompletion. Again on second and ten, it's Roethlisberger. And this is caught by Hayward Bay. That catch good for five. It's third down. That was not a completion that results in a highlight video. But at the same time, if you have those kind of completions all game long, eventually one of them might turn into a highlight. So completion on second down, that brings up third. To throw again is Roethlisberger. He gets it to Brown, complete. And he's got the first down yardage before he's brought down at the 42. There's no doubt about it. That's just one of the best connections in the league. Big Ben throwing it to Antonio Brown. And Antonio Brown has turned himself into such a player. A low round draft pick, but you can't beat his determination or work ethic. And Big Ben welcomes that. And Big Ben won a Super Bowl 23, youngest ever to do so, has never looked back. Completes it to Hayward Bay. And he gets it down to the 32. It'll be a pickup of 10 yards. And that'll make it second and a foot or so. And the pocket's been protected pretty good here so far on the opening drive. We always talk about confidence in runners and catchers and quarterbacks. How about the protection detail? They're not allowing anyone near the guy throwing the football. A fake to Bell. Now it's Roethlisberger. Over the middle, here to Coates. And down inside the 15, he goes. And the play goes for 19 yards. Gives him a new set of downs. And how about this first drive? They're being aggressive, slinging it around. Really confident, too, because they're not trying to fool them with running plays, throwing it, and they're being very successful right now. Now a first down carry by Bell. And he'll get this one down to about the 10-yard line. A gain of three, second down. I go all the way back to college with Le'Veon Bell. One of the better body transformations I've seen from a big, thick power back to the guy we see now who can do everything. And two years ago, of course, last year the injury, but two years ago over 1,300 yards. I think they think he can top that this year. I don't think there's any question about it. They'll run it for the first time with Williams. And only about a yard there as he takes it from the nine to the eight. Partner, we know today's NFL is really built around the guy throwing the football. But these short runs, they still pay dividends because they can take their toll on a defense and they can add up as the game goes along. You control the clock, you control the ball, and that way you often control the game. And a nickel look here for the Bengals as they try to defend this on third. From the gun on third down, it's Roethlisberger. This will be caught at about the five. And he will have the first down before he's brought down at the three. 
Back with Charles Davis, Brandon Gordon. It's Steeler football to begin quarter number two, and they've got it here with a first down. Long drive. The defense just cannot seem to catch a break and get off the field. First and goal at the three-yard line now. They'll try and run it in with Bell. And he's in. Touchdown, Pittsburgh. Le'Veon Bell taking it in from two yards out. And the Steelers take the ball down the field and score on their opening drive. On for the point after is Randy Bullock. And he'll put it through to make it 7-0 Steelers. well now to kick it away after the touchdown on the return it's Alex Erickson and a nice return sets him up pretty good here at the 30 yard line so now the Bengal offensive unit back out onto the field on the pickup there. It'll be second and eight. By the way, partner, you know who wouldn't mind seeing the Cleveland Browns every week? I'm going to guess Jeremy Hill. The man we just saw, Jeremy Hill. Yeah, week seven, 168 yards. And then week 14, 111 and a touchdown. Not bad. Not bad at all. And he does find his way into the end zone despite whoever they're playing. If you look back over the last couple of seasons, I believe only DeMarco Murray is keeping pace with him in touchdowns on the ground. Jeremy Hill has a nose for the end zone. Now that'll be tipped and intercepted. Picked by Sean Davis, the rookie. And he's able to bring it up five yards shy of midfield to the 45-yard line. And Pittsburgh getting set to take the field. And they were able to punch it in the end zone last time. They'll be looking to do that again here for the defense. Obviously, they'll be looking to stop them from punching it back in the end zone. It always is punch counter punch, isn't it? And which team has the advantage? Well, let's just go back. Last time on offense, they rolled downfield, got into a good rhythm. You can see a little more bounce in and out of the huddle. You can see the sideline really get into the game. So defensively, you're thinking to yourself, how do we take that away from them? How do we get the advantage back? Let's see what they come up with. I think pressure is always the first way to go. <laughs> you love pressure. We'll I see, love it. We'll see if they dial it up this drive. Three yards on the pickup. That's going to set up an interesting third and about four to go. We always like to talk about defense in terms of levels. First level defensive line, second level linebackers, third level defensive backs. On that run, that was what we call a first level run, and it was stopped by a second level player. An extra defensive back in the game now here for third and four. From the gun, it's Roethlisberger. And he's got Rodgers. And they're able to get this one down to the 25. A pickup of 24 on the third down conversion. Quarterbacks love slant routes because the receivers are breaking right into their line of vision. And receivers love them as well because they're getting the ball on the move and able to catch it and try and get upfield and gain additional yardage. Again, we'll see the pistol here. Now Roethlisberger going to hand the bell. And he'll lose yardage here going down back at the 28. A loss of a full three yards and now it's second down. Well, on that play, the expression, don't blink, you might miss something, certainly applied. That was fast. Defense diagnosed the play, and it was over in a heartbeat. Defense in a good spot. Let's see how the offense responds with a second and 13 now. They'll go again with Bell. And not much of a hole there as he gets it down to about the 24-yard line. Three yards on the pickup there, and they've got it back to third and 10. Right. 
10 yards to go on third. On third down, Roethlisberger. He's got time in the pocket. This is Bell on the dump off. And now the Bengal defense here calling a timeout. It's just their first, so they'll have two remaining here before we get to halftime. So on fourth down here, Mike Tomlin says, let's just get three. From the left hash, it's a 36-yard attempt. And Bullock will put this one through, and the lead moves to 10-zip. So the drive stalls out, but they are able to put three points on the board. Yeah, just a yard or two shorter than an extra point, so no problems converting there. After the successful field goal try, here's Boswell to send it away. And on the return, here comes Adam Jones. And he'll take this across the 25, a couple extra yards up to the 27-yard line. And out now, here come the Bengals. And following the interception, just any interception, are you a little bit more cautious when you start that next drive, or no, you just throw that out the window? I think you are. I don't think that there's any way you can run back out there and go, ah, totally didn't affect me. Let's just go ahead and be loose with the football again. You're going to take care of it, but you have to be careful about being too cautious because now you can't run any offense at all. Still want to attack. We'll see how they attack them here. Green with a catch left side. Seven yards to pick up on the pitch and catch. They're going to hurry back to the line now. Second down, Dalton. He's got time. And no escaping this time as he'll go down. They got him for a sack. Now the Steelers put a stop to the action with a timeout defensively. It's just their first, so they'll have two remaining here before we get to halftime. The Steelers insert their nickel defense on third down. Yeah, they add a DB. A first carry now for Rex Burkhead. And the Steelers signal for another timeout. So that means they're down to one remaining here as we head toward halftime. So here's the 2014 Pro Bowler. That's Kevin Huber on to kick this one away. Back deep for the Steelers, Antonio Brown. With it is Brown. Still on his feet. Give him 11 yards that time on the return. And the offense will take over with a new set of downs. The Steelers' offense now, they get ready to head back on the field. And last time, able to get three. It's not what they wanted. They wanted six, but they got at least something. They mustered something out of the drive. They'll take it. Just, I, I like the way you've described it. Not ideal, but they'll take it. Anything to put some points on the board. But this time on offense, they don't even want to see the field goal kicker trot on the field. They want that ball in the end zone. Yeah, they'll be going for six. 
Eli Rogers, the intended receiver. And Charles, let's switch gears for a second. Big news on Monday. Los Angeles now looking for a new head coach. Could it be a good thing that they make this move now as opposed to at the end of the season? I think in a lot of ways, yes, because you become the focal point for all people who might be interested in the job. And I think a lot of people will be. It is Los Angeles. Great market, but how about the team? Jared Goff, the rookie quarterback. Todd Gurley, the tremendous runner. Aaron Donald on defense and a heck of a defense around him. A lot of good reasons to be interested in this job. In the Buffalo snow, it was a little tough for Antonio Brown to get going. Five catches, 78 yards. For most guys, that's, hey, pretty good game. You just expect more from Brown, but, hey, Bell had it going on the ground. They didn't need to use him to the extent that they normally do because of what you said, Le'Veon Bell, 236 yards rushing. But when they did throw it to him, it was over 15 yards a catch. Antonio Brown, when he catches the football, he gains yardage. On the right side, caught by Green. A gain of six there on first. And there's another completion to the tight end. And let's face it, it is hard to overthrow a six-foot, six-inch target. <laughs> it is indeed. Quarterbacks like their speed. Now whistles come in. We're going to get a timeout here by the offense. And with halftime on the horizon, they'll be out of timeouts from here forward. Second down and four. It's a five receiver set. Three to the left, two to the right. Again, it's Roethlisberger. Green's got it over the middle. And he's going to get this inside the 30. They give him 14 yards that time and a fresh set of downs. And quickly, they get to the line. And now the clock will stop as he's able to get up and spike it here. So on second down, the field goal unit is on here as they try to get three before half. Made his first. This now from 46 yards away. And Bullock will put this one through. And that'll push the lead up to 13 and nothing. So a good kick there, and they wrap up the drive by putting three on the board. And you know, let's face it, you're not always going to come away with six. Defense in the NFL are just too good. But you've got to come away with something. And there, they get three. After the successful field goal try, here's Boswell to send it away. This is taken at his four. And nice work on the return as he'll start their drive just past the 30-yard line. So we've reached halftime here with the visiting Steelers out in front as we'll send you down to Orlando where Larry Ridley has our EA Sports halftime report. Larry, this is fielded a couple yards deep. And last year, that would have been a net gain of five on the return. This year, he stopped where he would have been if he had taken a knee. And that's at the 25. The Bengal offense now with a football first here to begin quarter number three. They come out here with a zero on the scoreboard. What was said in that locker room? That's what I want to know. I would love to have been in there because we often have the feeling that there's a lot of shouting, screaming, people upset. But typically, halftime locker rooms are a lot more clinical than that. And in this case, are they upset that the plays weren't working because of execution, or did they think just, they were just bad plays to call? Yeah. We'll find out pretty quickly here if they feel like they had something going, but they just need to do it a little bit better or not. We'll find out. Hill, the lone setback. And he'll get it up the middle. And he puts his head down and gets up to the 42 for a gain of about six. Some runs are blocked so well, you almost forget that someone has to carry the ball to gain the yardage. The leverage by the offensive line to create space up front, really well done. 
Four yards remaining now on second down. It's second down. Dalton looking. Throwing over the middle, and it's incomplete. He was looking for his favorite target, A.J. Green, that time. Third down here. tackle and the extra effort moves the sticks. And Brandon from our time in college football where receivers weren't running the traditional NFL route tree one thing they did learn find open areas, find soft spots and set up and catch the ball and I think we just saw that there. Yeah we saw that indeed picking up the first. Now a first down carry, it's Hill. And he'll lose yardage here, back at the 47. That's going to go as a loss of four, and it'll be second down. Brandon, that play typifies what we've seen from the offense all day long. They've had no success getting things going. I think for the offensive coordinator, he's got to go to that side of the play sheet that says try something different, try some specials, something they haven't seen all day to try and get this offense kick-started. Dalton throwing on second down. Finding time. Incomplete. And the offense looking to pick up the first down after the second down incompletion. And they'll add a DB in the secondary here on third and 14. Third and long. What will Dalton dial up? And he's going to be sacked back on his side of the field at the 44. They bring the safety on the blitz, and he busts through to drop him for an eight-yard loss. Third and long defense with no fear. They brought the pressure. Zero fear at all. That means they feel really good about the guys we're going to cover. But the biggest one is they think their pressure will get there before he has a chance to find an open receiver. And this will hit just beyond the goal line as it's into the end zone for a touchback. Time for the Steelers' offense now to get set for their first possession of half number two. They have the lead here. Well, we talk a lot about pregame speeches. What are halftime speeches like? For the most part, not nearly as emotional. They're a lot more clinical. Every now and then, though, they'll get after you if they think they need to light a fire. But in this case, let's go into the virtual locker room because here's what I think happened. They got in there and they said, listen, let's take control right away. Yeah, Defense, we got, the yeah. we, got the we, got the we got the lead. Defense, don't give up any points. Turn the ball back over to the offense and let them go down and score and give us more of a cushion in the game. Check so far. Defense shut them down. Let's see if the offense gets done. On second down, it's Bell. And a short pickup there as he'll take this up to right around the 20. Only a yard of the pickup there, and it'll bring up a third down. In my book, that's running the ball well, but with intelligence. How about him keeping the clock moving, staying in bounds? Yeah, even though it's the third quarter, you're thinking ahead, aren't you? This is where your running game can really help you with a lead in the second half. I agree totally. It's not just end-of-the-half situations that you worry about the clock. It's throughout the game, and with a lead, stay in bounds. Make them fight harder to try and catch you. And incomplete. He had nowhere to throw, so he just tossed it away. But that brings up fourth. From no second guessing the call here, it was third and long, so throwing the football was probably the smart play to try and pick it up. But they don't get it, and now the defense goes off the field feeling pretty good about themselves, gaining some momentum as they force them into a likely punting situation. Here's Jones. Well, he wasn't too far from breaking that. Officially, give him 15. And that will come the offense as they take over. 
Cincinnati now ready to take the field. And with this deficit, you can't have too many more drives like the last drive where you had to punt it away. You know what I would tell my offense right here? The punter doesn't exist, guys. He doesn't even exist. He's not a team anymore. I just cut him, all right? So you've got to go out and create some offense for us here and give us some points. No way does that guy get on the field on this drive. Poor punter. Yeah, he, it, it wasn't his fault. But some, hey, listen, there's some guy, there's got to be casualties at times. We're trying to win a game. 11 yards on the pickup, and it's good enough for a Cincinnati first down. There's nothing like getting out of the gate and finding your favorite target. Andy Dalton just did that with A.J. Green. And some people call that a nice fantasy football connection as well. Yeah, they're piling up the points that way, and they want to see that continue. Dalton with a give to Hill. Muscles him off. And he'll be taken down after a decent gain, and that will bring us to the end of this third quarter of play. Second down following the run. From the gun, Dalton looks to throw. And caught right side, Green. And they'll be inside the 35 now at the 34-yard line. It goes as a gain of eight that moves the chains. In so many ways, throwing the hitch route is actually one of the safer things an offense can do. Get the ball out to the receiver as fast as possible. Hope he's got man-to-man -man coverage and hope that his athleticism wins on the perimeter. Two receivers left, one to the right. Blue 10. Blue 10. On first and ten, here's Andy Dalton. And his throw's going to be incomplete. Tyler Boyd, the former Pitt Panther, was the target. And it's second down. So they're still at the original line of scrimmage here. Second down and ten. Another look for Dalton on second and 10. And the catch made, it's Tyler Boyd. Give him 12 yards on that one, it earns him a fresh set of downs. That partner, a nice little connection there on the corner route. The receiver set it up perfectly, worked his way inside, and then broke it back to the outside for the completion. So the ref takes a peek here, wants to see if the receiver had possession and both feet inbounds. If this were a college game, this would be a legal catch. It's the second foot that they're looking at to make sure it gets down. You have to have two inbounds in the NFL. Looking to jam the receivers at the line here. Press coverage look defensively. The first down throw coming for Dalton. Caught Eifert over the middle. A gain of six there on first. They gave up the completion there, but this is what zone defenses count on. Catching the ball and not much run after the catch. And the next snap coming inside the red zone here. Dalton to Hill on the draw, and he'll get it here to the 10-yard line. The six yards on the pickup, and it leaves him with a first and goal. What a game this defense has played. They're pitching a shutout, so it'll be fun to watch down the stretch to see if their defensive coordinator continues to be as aggressive as he's been all game long. And a new set of downs here after picking up the first on the ground. They come up in an empty set. Four wide receivers, one tight end. Dalton, first and 10. And he just throws this one away. Smart decision here this close to the end zone, and it brings up second down. They got pressure there and only rushing three. And there's a defensive coordinator right now who is celebrating not just getting home with three there, but realizing if that's the type of pressure he can get in the entire game, then his pass defense is going to be excellent. You're dropping eight. Where are you going to go with the football? On second down, Hill looking for a seam, but finding none. He'll get back to the line of scrimmage, and that's it. And they'll lose a yard that time, and that's going to lead to a third down. When you're putting together a formula for winning defense, it's exactly what we're seeing in this game. Controlling the line of scrimmage, attacking, and changing everything so that now they're playing in the offense's backfield. They're playing an excellent game. 
Dalton on third and goal. Surveying the field. That's going to be caught at the 10-yard line. They get only four that time as that leads us to a fourth down. Completed pass brings up a fourth down situation. Do you play analytics on this one? Well, you know, what do your analytics tell you about going for it here? I wonder what they would say. They tell me you're down by this margin fourth quarter. You're going. The field goal doesn't help. They're going to go for the six here on fourth and goal. Big fourth down here. It's Dalton. And he's brought down. Can't do anything with a football. It's a sack and a turnover on downs. Pittsburgh's offense now heading back out onto the field. And on the last go around, they really couldn't get anything going. They had to punt from deep inside their own territory, which means they're going to lose the field position battle as a general rule. What they're looking for now is a little more consistency, move the ball at least a few times on offense, get a couple of first downs, and hopefully flip the field. Yeah, just something to build off of. That's what they're looking for here. the offense lining up first and ten. They come out here in the eye. And they'll keep it on the ground with Bell. And he will make his way back to where he started from, and that's all, as we will make our way to the two-minute warning. Roethlisberger with a give to Bell. And a decent game there as that takes us to the two-minute warning. And now the Bengals are going to call another timeout. That'll be their second, so one more chance to stop the clock here. And we'll be back. So one yard to go here on third down. Four down, four down. They come up with one running back. That's Bell. A fake to Bell. Now it's Roethlisberger. This is Bell on the dump off. Nine yards on the pick up there, and it keeps the drive alive. So many times you hear today's NFL described as a space game. Get your best players into space with the football in their hands. That's why sometimes you just swing it out to your runner, get him out in the flat, and let him have a chance to make people miss an open field. A give to Bell. Now Bell hit. He lost the football. But it looked like the Steelers were able to recover, and they will indeed hold on to the ball. And play is stopped here. Timeout. It's the defense calling the timeout here. That'll be their third and final stoppage here as we step aside. A near turnover, but the offense recovers it. Now they'll try to regroup on second. Back to the ground, this time with Bell. And he will lose yardage back to the 34-yard line. So he loses three yards there. Now third down. The defense won that play so fast. And I think if the running back even had time to notice if anyone was there, it was just a blink of an eye, and there was a loss on the play. Got to get to the 26 for a first. This is third down. Again, it's Bell. No gain there on the play, and that's going to leave them with a fourth down. Nice job there defensively to clamp down because really 
They've been on their heels this drive. Agreed, and they really needed that one for confidence, just to feel a little bit better. But I don't know if I would be daunted by them stopping me on one run. This drive has gone pretty well. I could come right back at them. And this kick is not going to be close. It's well short, well right to boot. And this score will stay right where it is. Well, this winds up an empty possession. Everything looked okay. He just never got the ball on target. And knowing him, he'll be disappointed with that effort. set to take the field. The clock cannot be stopped here. Defense can't do anything. So, kneel it down, take it home. No doubt about it. It's what you practice for in winning situations each and every week. Victory formation. Take a knee and go out into the locker room and celebrate. Call it a victory. And the storyline of this one, Charles, no doubt the number zero. Zilch, nada. A shutout so hard to do in the NFL. It really is, and what an accomplishment because you feel that not just on the defensive side, but as a full team. There's a lot of pride that goes into shutting out an opponent. And how about that zero on the scoreboard for them going along with those zeros in the time column too?